All right, what's going on everybody? So in today's video, I'm gonna be giving a book review of Sell It Like Sirhant, uh, Ryan Sirhant's book. And he was actually in Washington, D.C. Uh, somewhat recently, so we were able to go to his book event, uh, meet with him, he did some Q&As. Uh, and he was a really cool dude, really down to earth, very personable, and had a lot of cool stories and offered a ton of value. And, and from watching the show and things like that, you wouldn't necessarily think he was the most uh, down to earth person, but he was really cool, offered a ton of value, and we got some great insights about the real estate industry. Now, now, as far as this book goes, uh, I think it was overall, it's a really good book and it was very easy to read. So a lot of real estate books, they might be like textbooks, like manuals that take like eight hours to read. He was writing as if he was like talking to you and you were right there. So it wasn't very technical of a book, which I think is the way you should write if you do write a book. Uh, nobody wants to read like eight hour manuals and things like that. So it was very easy to read. He had a ton of stories. That's also a great way to communicate in general, just uh, through stories. So instead of giving like tons of uh, academic theories and things like that, he said, look, this is this crazy story that happened to me in the real estate world. This is how I overcame it. And this is the lesson I learned. So it was packed with stories, easy to read. And you can tell he, he doesn't come from like a professional writing background because it was very, you know, co almost conversational, which, which made the book even better in my opinion. Um, now, as far as 10 different things that I learned, number one, throughout the book, he always talks about juggling a lot of balls. Uh, which sounds kind of funny, but uh, what he's talking about is you never just want to rely on like one deal. If you're focused on one deal, uh, you can come across as like desperate, needy, and if that deal doesn't go through and you're just putting all your chips on the one deal, then you could be in trouble. Uh, so you want to have as many different deals and really as many different opportunities as possible, you know, in the air that you're, you're juggling essentially, uh, because one or two might fall through. That's the nature of the real estate business. Uh, if you have like 10 deals, let's say, you know, there's going to be one or two that are not going to go through for various reasons. So you always want to have uh, different opportunities, different things that you're working on. Number two is that you need to meet lots of people. And that's obvious. Everybody knows that for sales. But one thing that he said he did that you could probably implement if you wanted to was he had like three, I think three gym memberships. So he'd go to some like boxing gym in the morning and then he'd go to another gym. And then in the evening time, he'd go to a third gym and he was just networking there. So he would try to meet as many people as possible. And you can do that with gyms. You can do that just with networking events. You can do that with anything, uh, whether it's gyms or anything else, try to just attend like as many different events and networking meetings uh, as humanly possible possible because the more people you meet, the more sales you'll make. Uh, it's inevitable. Okay. The third thing I learned was that he was always trying to advance his career in any possible way. So he would shadow, he would ask different uh, successful agents if he could shadow them for a day. He was always doing uh, different types of marketing strategies. He was doing, he was looking for like every possible edge uh, to get ahead in the real estate business. So something you could take from that is that, look, if there is an event, a training event, yeah, maybe you know like 90% of the material, but maybe you still go just to get like that 1% better, or maybe to meet an extra like three to five people, or maybe you read that book just to learn like one little strategy. Maybe you read the entire book and there's only one thing you learn, but hey, you still learned one thing and you're still getting a little bit better. So you should just try to look for every possible opportunity to get better because what he also said, he started as a rental agent in the not so great neighborhoods and he got a lot of experience doing that. And then he started moving up to bigger and bigger deals. And he actually talked about at the events, you know, at first he was known as just like Ryan, the rental guy. And then he, he said his goal was like every, uh, the next higher price property that he sold or rented, he would then be known as, you know, Ryan, the $5,000 a month rental guy. And then eventually, you know, Ryan, the $500,000 condo guy. And then eventually to the point where it is today is, you know, Ryan, the million dollar listing guy, uh, where, you know, he might not even touch a property under a million dollars. And I don't know his exact criteria, but you get the point. Another thing he talked about was that he started his career at the bottom of the economy. So I think it was in 2008, right after a bunch of the big banks crashed, that was literally when he became a real estate agent. And I think it goes to show you that it doesn't matter what city you're in, what the economy is doing. If you practice your craft, and you hustle and you're motivated, uh, you can be successful in pretty much anything. I know another real estate investor, a little bit different, but a real estate investor who uh, basically became super successful during the downturn of the economy as well. And he had a funny quote. He basically just said, we decided not to participate in the recession. <laughs> So for him, it was almost like a mindset thing. I mean, there's opportunities in up markets, down markets. Um, you just have to practice your skill and work really hard. All right, lesson number five was that you would think Ryan Serhant would be like the top sales agent just from the get-go. You know, just by the way he looks on TV and the way he acts, you would think he's the best sales agent. But in reality, he was actually horrible at sales when he first got started, like, like many people are. And then he just started evolving and getting better uh, year by year. And he didn't really start making good money until I think year three. I don't think he made really any money 
until year three of his real estate career. So if you're persistent, you learn the fundamentals and you look for slight improvements every day, you know, eventually you'll get to a point where maybe you're like Ryan Serhan, you have your own TV show. And I guess the point of it is nobody's gonna start as a top sales agent. You have to be persistent. You have to learn a little bit every single week, every single month. And eventually you'll get to the next level as a real estate agent. Okay, so tip number six was that if you wake up earlier, you have more time to conquer the world. Uh, so he's a very early riser. If you follow him on social media, you know what I'm talking about. He's always posting pictures of himself at the gym at like 4 a.m. or 4.30, just insanely early times. And I'm not saying you have to wake up that early, but there is a lot of value in waking up like two hours. You know, if you wake up at seven and people start emailing you at nine, uh, you would have had two hours of uninterrupted, valuable time to focus on your business, get things straightened away for the day, uh, respond to different clients, and just get everything in order before most people even even wake up. So myself personally, I try to wake up at least a few hours, you know, six or seven, uh, to get a lot of things done and respond to emails and just get everything uh, straightened away for the week as well as the month. Number seven, and this is not really like a huge tip, but it's just kind of interesting. He follows all of his clients on social media, and then obviously he's a huge social media influencer himself. So what I took from that is, uh, no matter if you're a real estate agent or really any type of salesperson, uh, you should be very active on social media. You should get your name out there, get your brand out there, maybe follow your clients. You don't have to do that, but you wanna be pretty well known on social media and, and definitely use it to your advantage. Everybody's on Instagram and Facebook and YouTube these days, so you need to have at least just like a basic profile, you know, utilize basic online marketing strategies uh, so people can find you and, and really see what you're all about. Okay, the next thing I learned was that every time he does a sale, every time he makes a commission, he puts about 10% of that into marketing uh, with things like postcards, uh, online marketing, and different strategies that he's working on. So 10% is, is quite a significant amount, especially when you're doing like millions and millions of dollars of deals. And that's probably why you see his name everywhere. He's very strategic and very effective with his online as well as his offline marketing. So I would even take that a step further and I would say you should put 10% into your marketing and, and sales strategies, but you should also put like maybe another five or maybe even another 10% into learning new skills and evolving as a real estate agent. Because you see a lot of real estate agents, real estate investors, just entrepreneurs in general, that their business is exactly the same every single year. And you know the commonalities between all those people is that they never invested in themselves. They never sought out mentors. They never attended seminars. I know so many real estate investors that, you know, it's funny, their, their business is literally exactly the same as it was 10 years ago. And it's like, they're, they're like confused as to why. And when in reality, it's, it's like so blazingly obvious. Um, they, they've just never really learned new skills. So they do the same thing every single year. So don't be like that. Uh, invest in your marketing, invest in yourself, and that's how you get to the next level. Okay, lastly, he is very big on follow-up as any sales professional or entrepreneur for that matter should be. So he has just a crazy follow-up system. I mean, the point was really just to follow up as much as possible until they either tell you to stop bothering them or they sell their property. Uh, so you can do, you know, as far as follow-up goes, you can do things like retargeting online. If you don't know what that is, just, just look it up. That's, that's a whole nother video right there, but it's pretty easy to implement. Uh, you can have a CRM system with like an auto, you can have an auto email responder. You can just uh, make notes of, of when to follow up with people on your calendar, but you should, you know, you should think of your follow-up as like a huge net and you don't want holes in your net. If you, if you have holes in your net, you're not following up with people. Uh, there's going to be deals that go to other agents or other investors for that matter. So there you have it. 10 things I learned from Ryan Serhant's uh, Sell Like Serhant. Overall, it's a really awesome book. Very easy read, uh, but very, very valuable read. And I wish more people would write like that. Uh, so thanks for watching. Please subscribe. Please like, please share, and I'll see you in the next one. All right, bye.